this is In Focus. I'm Bradley Valenaki, and there's been a lot happening in the past week with regards to the COVID-19 situation we have here in Papua New Guinea. And there has been a group representing some of the frontliners who have been very vocal about the COVID-19 situation in the country. And I'm privileged to have with me in the studio uh, the PNG Nessus Association, first of all, Pres President F Frederick uh, Kebai, and also General Secretary Gibson Sune. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you. All right, so gentlemen, you have raised concerns about the nurses in PNG during the pandemic. Do you feel your pleas have been heard by government? Uh, thank you, Bradley, uh, and I thank you, viewers throughout the long country. Uh, firstly, we like to thank you long invitation, blah, 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 come long expressing views, blah, 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 long, or when something will come up, especially in the digital pandemic, the deadly coronavirus, and we will eat in country strong. Yes, me, blah, 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 nursing association, and I need the constitution, blah, blah, me bless have represent the more members of the Miblalong, side long all industrial advocacy long all, all welfare long all, and the same time long all professional development long all. Yes, long side block COVID time and first been eating country long, same time long March last year. Me bless Papua New Guinea Nursing Association been come out strong, the protest the Golo government, the put them all mechanism in place, the make sure that spread long COVID in can go long all people. The Mipla appeal of government long only must come up on them good long isolation centers. Now, same time long all good block quarantine civilians long all airport and seaports. Same time Mipla petition government long look look long engaging Mipla long working prevention and awareness long community. Now, same time Mipla two appeal of government long you must come up on time standard protocol treatment long managing COVID law country. Since then it coming up now. Because first wave, I mean, you know, eating country good. Me blood thing was some government, you know, put him all this little mechanism, good little place. But now, this little time, I eat him country strong strength. I mean, work long, affecting plenty of nurses, long workforce, long side long nurses, because me blood front liners, the time sick, I mean, come eating me blood hard, I'm hard to me blood treating more patients. Now, so far, I'm triple, all members will play die. So me bla you walk talk talk strong can long our government must come good long disseminating all information good before and we can introduce you this la nuclear vaccine come inside our country. Me bla you know talk no god. Me bla you accept him and must he come because vaccine and we have a prevent him all communicable diseases. But before we must introduce he come to country, me bla like government must put him funding he go in shallow training, long how long uh, look several of this nuclear vaccine, composition belong them, all side effects or adverse effects belong them, na treatment belong them. Now how by me can educate him all man, long help him all yet, long avoid him or prevent him this sick. All right. Thank you. So so long look look belong you pla. Um long look look belong you pla. You pla look him all same government he he are him all karai belong you pla since last year he coming up now or behind him. Uh, thank you. When uh, COVID-19 first came to our country, uh, Nessus Association, uh, because we make up the major workforce and we knew in advance that we'll be frontliners. And definitely we are frontliners. And with Nessus, we work 24-7 and we are with patients all the time. So on that note, we have given uh, government various options to take. Uh, establishing isolation unit, training health workers, uh, improve awareness program, and, and also we have asked government to ensure our nurses. And I think uh, Marabe Basel government have not ignored what uh, we have, have stated. Uh, we appreciate what they are currently doing to interrupt the transmission. Uh, from spreading, and it is a big challenge because we live in a, our cultural way of living. Uh, we are prone to cross infection because we live in a collective society. Uh, so we feel that the government is playing its part. Uh, 
like for, for us nurses, we were under insurance, we were not covered. Uh, but uh, through Marabe Stephen government, we have our nurses award approved and the nurses are not now covered under insurance. Life and medical cover are being covered. It's yet to be implemented. Uh, so that's a good step forward. Uh, we appreciate what the government is doing. Uh, the training, health awareness, those things that we have stated earlier, they are being conducted, but they are limited. It has to open up and reach the majority. And we would like to see the health department take ownership because COVID-19 is, uh, is here to stay. We will not eradicate COVID-19 because of the way we live. And we would like government, especially the public health department within the National Department of Health, public health sector, I mean, within the National Department of Health to take ownership and then start rolling it out. Health promotion has to come in, and then they can work through collaboration, effective network, establish effective network and get the message out. Now that we've got the vaccine coming in, uh, we nurses need to be trained. We need to understand the vaccine. The root of administrating the vaccine, we need to understand how it will be administered. Now ISOS is uh, immunizing uh, the people, uh, the frontline healthcare workers. We need our own health care workers to be trained so in the long run it will be sustainable and it will be here to stay. Uh, and with the, with the current cold chain system that we have in the country which is collapsing, I'm not sure how health department will approach that to maintain the compet uh, competency or the strength of the vaccine through the cold chain system to, remote, to, to be delivered through remote and isolated health facilities. So that is a challenge that is there, which the department has to, has to work something out. Uh, we have also mentioned something about the isolation unit. I think the government has responded. So the isolation units have been set up. The main reason for us to ask them to set up the isolation units is because it cannot be set up within Port Mosby General Hospital. COVID-19 is places People, older people at risk, the aging workforce. We also have um, people with underlying medical conditions are also at risk. So we don't want COVID-19 patients to be looked after at Port Mosby General Hospital because that's the specialist referral hospital for the country. So we want isolation unit to be set outside of PMGH. And I think uh, the NCDC Commission, uh, National Department of Health, and the government is taking the right approach to slowly moving it out and set up the isolation unit. So there are a few things that we have discussed, but it's in the government. They've taken, they've looked into it, they've addressed it. Interesting discussions there with uh, you gentlemen, uh, Mr. Gibson Sione and also uh, Frederick uh, Kebai. Uh, we'll go for a break now and return with more on the other side. This is In Focus. Welcome back. Uh, discussions with the PNG Nurses Association. Now, gentlemen, before the break, we were discussing about the situation currently uh, with response to COVID-19 and, 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 of course, the frontliners, the nurses' involvement in all this. In Port Mosby, the Taramakotik Center has been set up as a temporary uh, field hospital during this pandemic. And it's also been put aside uh, an area for uh, frontliners, including nurses who fall ill to COVID-19, uh, to be treated there. Your comments on this? Me, the PNG, and I will advocate strong through the digital especially on welfare, on frontline health workers. Yes, me, the nurses, me, I will advocate on nurses, but the frontliners ranges from doctors down to community health workers and all other health support workers within the hospital where MIPLA PNG and they will advocate long all welfare long haul. Because MIPLA is a look out in sick man. Time MIPLA is sick. Some time MIPLA is treating MIPLA here. But we would like our employer 
also to look after us. Me play work law advocate strong now. Lately, me play find him out of him. A long time he been go, stop one time, director nursing service, the port must be general hospital. Long look, 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 side long, all welfare, long, all workman. Time only sick. How all by look out him all. Now me find him out of him. Only been allocate him one bla area long aquatic center where all health workers time only sick, but look out him good long hub. Where this plan and me like him, that's a way forward. Now, me like him, this like kind of standard rollout of care of health workers must be rolled out throughout the country. Some a week ago, Pinish, you may look him all nurses long lay. Even talk talk long all kind of something all same. Huh? Isolation facilities, facilities too, blown look out him all yet. Um, uh, staff long hub. And now uh, all all marasin we all need him long walk him this pla walk na too. All something all same all all glove and all face uh, shields na kind all something all same. Um, suppose you me look him government he roll him out this pla something to he go long on our problem. Hub long country too. I think him by good pla legally. Suppose all get all health workers only equip him all long PPE. Me no think by God spread long this pla sick him by come up long all especially the health workers. Now we as we speak. We know there are a lot of funding coming in, but we are not realizing those, especially PPE, in all health facilities. There are three levels of PPE, PPE but this is not uh, taking place or not seen at the workplace, where we big black concern, where we black look, 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 government look, must make sure that all get this like PPP, it must roll good down, it long. all get the level of health service delivery inside the country. All nurses belong you me throughout long country, only go on a school long, use him this plan or something. Now, long walk belong all, only use him this plan or something too, and them all marasin, all something all is how you use him, long walk him, walk belong all, only treat him all sick, all them TB, malaria, na too. Uh, look out him all mama time all the car and picking in and you may look him to this rates long mortality rates inside the country and still stop high yet. Uh, look look long you plan now three plan is even die penis long this plus COVID-19 I think I'm one plan concern long you plan now yet. In Papua New Guinea going back to our health system we've got a fragile health system. Uh, when you look at now the Tarama setting to move uh, patients infected from Port Mosby General Hospital to the isolation unit. That's the best approach. Now we have COVID-19. You never know. Tomorrow you may have another infection. Or we may have COVID-20 or COVID-25 or, you know, other infections may come and we may need to isolate them. We need to have a, a unit established all across the country. So once we've got infections of such, we can easily manage them, isolate them, not control them. Uh, coming back to the PPE, in, in health, we've got infectious control standard policies and guidelines that as health workers, we must comply with. And, and that is one of them that we must comply with is PPE. But sometimes in Papua New Guinea, we've got uh, funding issues and other issues that affects the health department to all the health facilities to, uh, to passage those PPEs and medications and other things. So this is where funding is a struggle sometimes. And that's where we want to implement the infectious control standard, but approved by WHO, but then we don't have the appropriate PPEs and equipments and detergents and so on, are valuable to make it happen. So that's the challenge faced by, uh, by the nurses. Of course. We, we are talking about you know, the response here in Port Mosby where it's visible, but you think about the nurses working in the rural parts of the country, the HEOs, the CHWs, who also contribute to the greater good or contribute to the, to the delivery of health throughout the country. Uh, that must be, you know, a struggle for them to also see that some of these uh, services or, or, or PPEs or equipment that are received in Port Moresby are also uh, seen there as well. You are absolutely correct. I totally agree with you. It's, it's a huge uh, challenge. 
Some facilities are out in the outer island. Some are within the remote and rugged mountains of the country. Very isolated geographical locations. Accessibility makes it difficult. So, you know, it's, 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 it's very hard to get uh, those supplies down all the way to remote and isolated uh, villages. You know, we, we hear people saying that medical supplies is a problem. We've heard that. PPE, it's also a problem because we, we cannot get them down to the peripheral settings. And that's the challenge that I've mentioned earlier that the uh, Department of Health, it's about time to strategize and think outside the box and they have to make plans to reach the rural majority and not doing things uh, only in Port Mosby. Like now from COVID-19, that's a time to learn from what's happening. That's the time COVID-19 is testing us to look at our health system. Do we have a health system that is vibrant? Do we have a health system that is ready to face the challenge? The answer is no. So if the answer is no, that means health department, yes, they can work with the uh, national uh, control center and provide the statistics of uh, COVID-19 and other informations, but then they have to strategize and use resource, manpower, and IT system to make sure that they fix their own health delivery system. So when we have COVID-19, we are looking at the urban centers, but people live with and through people, uh, the community. So nurses live with the community. So in those remote places, if we have COVID-19, how can it be a, a case detection, management, et cetera? Out you know, it, it is a huge challenge for, for us, the nurses, as frontliners is in those remote places. True. The bigger picture, but also taking into the account the smaller people who, who make up the bigger picture. This is in focus on MTV. We'll be bo back with more on the other side. Conversations with the PNG Nurses Association. Welcome back. Now, gentlemen, um, there has been concerns uh, not only for uh, nurses, but the public service really in Papua New Guinea, the aging workforce. Um, you may look at all small nests too. Christmas Blongoli, you go close to, or you have Bruce Impinis, Mark Blong Walker, where government put him inside long Papua New Guinea. Uh, how do we solve this? Or how by me walk him long, fix him this plan? Inside the PNG Nursing Association, I will advocate long nurses within the public sector. At the same time, I will advocate long nurses in the private sector. Inside the PNG NA, I got 4,000 ML members from the Papua New Guinea Nursing Association, ML financial members, but we do have more than that. But nearly 50% of the workforce, the nurses, uh, at the aging workforce at this moment. Now, outside, when, it, when we look back to COVID, COVID is easier to kill people who are, their age is about 50 and above. And that's where nursing workforce at the moment is at risk. And with the current uh, trend going on, we are hearing and getting figures throughout the country, nurses are already infected with COVID and affected with COVID. In Port Moresby General Hospital alone is about 100, 120 plus. I just had uh, from Western province, from Popondeta, there are already confirmed cases of nurses being ill with uh, COVID. Our appeal to the government is that there are a lot of nurses out there, new graduates who are looking for work. We are only appealing to the government at this time to ensure that they approve the organizational structure of all the PHA throughout the country so that they can recruit the young workforce into the system. As we speak now, there is a fridge of uh, recruitment within the Department of Health and DPM. Our appeal to them is that please, nurses out there are working for, uh, looking for work, but how they are going to absorb into the system, it is only through DPM and department, they have to sit down and correct measures 
and do the recruitment. And if there is shortage of manpower within the country, we would like the country, the PNG government, to look for nurses outside of the country to come in to assist at this time when we are facing the COVID crisis. All right. So uh, we are talking about the uh, elderly who are vulnerable to COVID-19 and who are at most risk uh, at this stage. Three members or nurses have, have passed on as a result of COVID-19. They may have underlying uh, uh, health conditions. But look, in terms of, uh, we, we spoke many times about recognition. Huh? Uh, what sort of recognition has been given to them during this time? Because they were at the front line and they fell ill and, and they um, died, apparently. I'll come to that. Uh, when you look at the aging workforce, it, got, uh, it goes back to uh, the leadership, governance, and management within the health sector. Uh, we've got an aging workforce that needs to be retired and replaced by new graduates. Uh, within the health sector, there are many changes taking place. We have moved from uh, provincial hospital setting and uh, what we call provincial health before, who are responsible for preventative public health. Now they have come under one uh, one setting, which is Provincial Health Authority. The purpose of establishing Provincial Health Authority is good. Uh, and that is to get the service right to the people in, in one basket. But, but there are many issues. Like I've said, leadership, governance, and management at the National Department of Health has terribly failed. If you can see the National Health Plan 20. 21 to 2030 is currently not in place. Firstly, we will have to have a national health plan in place. And with, as per the national health plan, the structure will be defined. Once the structure is defined and approved by DPM, that is where recruitment will take place. And then once the recruitment takes place, there is also a process through which the retrenchment process must take place between the Department of Health and the respective health facilities and DPM. Those, because we don't have a national health plan, because the structure has not been approved, you know, DPM cannot just go and recruit anybody they want on the street. There has to be a structure, approved structure, for them to based on before recruitment. And because the health plan is not in place with current, current uh, COVID-19, it is really putting the health department at test. Uh, if we don't uh, look into the aging workforce, the health system itself will collapse, and definitely it will collapse. So the leadership and governance within the health department has to change. And the health plan has to come into place. And then they start, the structure has to be approved. Basic government practice we are going over. Correct. Um, for the implementation of such. Now, uh, we spoke about the need for help, du help during this time, and we've certainly seen that from the Australian government and, and, and also from the US, who've sent in volunteers uh, through uh, their governments for assistance um, during this time of emergency. In your view, will this uh, sort of uh, help Papua New Guinea in in, in the response to COVID-19? Uh, yes, we, we appreciate uh, uh, Australia and other partners coming in to, to support us. Uh, the way forward to this is they must work in collaboration with uh, uh, the current healthcare practitioners so that they impart their knowledge and skills and support each other and work through. So once they leave us, we have learned from them, so we will continue to sustain our health system. If, uh, if they come in and do what they want to do and without working with our local nurses and others, then there's, and once they leave, there is a gap. All right. Or there will be a gap, so, yep. So, so, so final, final one from me. Um, in terms of vaccination rollout to other country, we hear that the um, health workers in Port Moresby will, will receive this uh, AstraZeneca vaccine in, in, in Papua New Guinea and also 
other parts of country which is the hotspot. Uh, your final remarks with regards to vaccine. Yes, uh, thank you. Vaccine, me fully support him. Uh, with the current uh, concern, me will raise him in terms of training of the particular vaccine which is now taking place. We would like it to be rolled out so that the frontline health workers can be humanized, so they can be protected to continue to look after, look after the sick workforce. Yep, gentlemen, we have come to the end of the program. Uh, we appreciate your time with us. Thank you very much for being part of uh, In Focus. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be part of your, the Focus. All right, so um, if you have comments on tonight's discussion, you can engage with us social on our Facebook page, or if you have missed the program, you can catch it later on our YouTube channel. That's from the MTV Online channel. You can also find this episode there. Uh, on behalf of the team, it's been a pleasure. Take care, stay safe, bye for now.